Hello again, uh, welcome along. This year's St James's Palace Stakes, a race which was first run in 1834, features the mighty Frankel, who's sure to put uh, plenty of thousands of spectators on the gate. Gary Nutting is here in the studio to discuss the merits of his chances and uh, those of some of the others that are there to try and dethrone Henry Cecil's champion. Let's check out the entries. Frankel obviously is the outstanding uh, contender here. Dream Ahead is a possible, so long as he gets uh, the ground conditions to suit. Uh, Dubari Gold, uh, twice a runner-up in the, in the English and the Irish 2000 Guineas. Acceleration, second to Frankel, of course, at Newbury, won the German Guinea since then. And looking further down the list there, we've got uh, Wooten Bassett at the bottom, who could easily bounce back here following a slightly disappointing run in the French 2000 Guineas. So, Gary... Frankel, this mighty horse who, um, <laughs> is, everywhere you look at his form is standing up brilliantly, including here in the Royal Lodge last September, Treasure Beach, the Derby runner-up, miles behind him here. Yeah, this was the race that um, confirmed um, what a almost a freak of nature this horse is, and he, he's gone on to prove that in the Guineas. Uh, I mean, he's absolutely annihilated these. And, um, you know, those, as I say, those adjectives that have been used to describe him, um, for once are, uh, are probably justified. Mm. Um, he does seem a, you know, an exceptional animal. Can you see any chinks in his armour? I and mean, given that he's got coarse form and everything as well, and we hear that Henry Cecil saying that he's come on since Newmarket, he's settling better. Uh, is there anything in there at all that can touch him in this race or is it another procession, do you think? I guess the only conceivable chink in his armour is given the way he races, mm. you know, how long he's going to be able to keep that up, you know, over a series of races. Um, but, you know, you, you wouldn't be worried about that um, <laughs> <laughs> in the middle of June on only his, only his second start as a three-year-old. Yeah. Um, it's impossible to see past him as far as I'm concerned. OK, well, let's look, check out Dubawi Gold, who so far <coughs> has shown himself to be a pretty high-class colt. And uh, this second in the Irish 2000 guineas, a little bit unlucky, I thought, here. I've looked at this race many times on the website, and uh, Roderick O'Connor had the run of the race, for sure. Yeah, definitely, and uh, Richard Hughes has said in his racing post column that it uh, wasn't his finest hour. Um, and these things happen. You know, we all know the way Hughesy rides. He likes to give them every chance to, uh, to settle, conserve their energy. Um, as, he, as he also said, you know, he gets it right a lot more than he gets it wrong, but mm. occasionally, um, you know, uh, riding like that, you you know you you are going to be unlucky on occasions, and and that's what's happened there. Hard to see him making up the six lengths he was beaten by in the Newmarket two thousand. Well, exactly, and um, if anything, you know Ascot should suit Frankel better. I, I would imagine um, that it's easier filling the lungs going round a bend than mm. it is um, you know in the in that straight mile at Newmarket. Mm. Um, so you know nothing. Unless it's by design, nothing's going to be able to, to go with Frankel early and Tom Creeley can give him a breather whenever he wants, I, I would imagine. Sure. Um, I say by design because it's interesting that um, the Abdullah team have a couple of other entries in there who, you know, ordinarily you wouldn't think would be in there, rerouted and um, uh, Duck Scholar. Uh, so maybe they're there as a possible pacemaker early, I don't mm -hmm. know. Um, would Wooden Bassett, if he lines up here, would he be another one that might force the issue or try to? Because... He's done that before. But it's, uh, yes, absolutely. I mean, that's his style of running. But um, what do you do if you're a trainer and jockey of a rival of Frankel? You know, if you try and go with him, mm -hmm. <laughs> you, might not left, you might not be left with a horse for the rest of the season. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, Casamento, we've not seen him, have we? And, and it, amazing. Isn't it? Even he didn't get that close to him. But, no. um, you know, Frankie has said after that race that basically Frankel killed him. Um, and, uh, you know... It would be interesting to see when Casamento re resurfaces. What about this fella in the French 2000 Guineas? He finished fifth. He lost his unbeaten record, didn't he? He missed, missed the English version because he wasn't ready for it. Um, is he a guaranteed stare at a mile, Gary, anyway? Wooden Bassett, do you think? No, I, I, I don't think he is necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, admirable horse. Um, but, you know, you have to say that the run in France was disappointing and they were very bullish before that, beforehand. Um, so you can't think there were any excuses, even though he had a wide draw. Um, you know, they made the point before that, beforehand, that he overcame a wide draw in the two-year-old race there last year. Mm. Um, so I don't know. I think the jury's slightly out on him, although you have to respect it when Richard Fahey and Paul Hannigan were both so effusive about the way he'd been working in the run-up to France. 
Moving on to the horse that chased home Frankel um, behind him in the, in the Green Mistakes, Acceleration, trained by Marco Botti. I was me immensely taken by this performance in the German 2000 Guineas. It was an incredible turn of foot he showed, having travelled well. Yes, I mean, <laughs> when he finished second in the Greenham, we all sort of <laughs> thought, oh, well, you know. What's he beaten? Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. But uh, this horse has come out, um, like a lot of Marco Botti's horses this season, when they are running well. Um, and as you say, you know, he's given that uh, Greenham form a real, um, a real boost there. Uh, yeah, good performance. Uh, you know, obviously the standard of horses he's meeting there wouldn't be um, uh, up to the level of our guineas, you would imagine. Mm. Um, and equally, <laughs> why is he going to reverse the form of Frankel? Is he, is he favourite to finish second to Frankel again? I, I tend to think that he probably will do, on that evidence. I it suppose could still be improving, couldn't he? Yeah, I, I, I suppose you've got a point there. Yep, yep. Given the style right. of that win, um, he, you know, we, we may be underestimating him. You're not underestimating. No, I, I'm not. <laughs> I think he's a really nice colt, Gary. But um, let's talk about Dream Ahead because he's the forgotten horse in many respects. The joint champion two-year-old with Frankel from last year yep. denied a run so far this spring because of the, you know, the incredibly arid conditions. If he lined up, is he a, is he a threat? Is he a possibility to? Shake up Frankel. Well, he he could be, couldn't he? Um, you know, you've got to you've got to draw a line under the uh, Dewhurst run. Um, but you know, he wouldn't be the first horse after a few runs as a two-year-old to disappoint in the Dewhurst and bounce back. Mm. Um, you know, prior to that, he had looked out of the top draw. So he's another one that you know people are going to be scratching around for each way bets in this race and. Um, I personally find it quite difficult to, to nail the colours to a particular mast over mm. this one, but uh, certainly Dream Ahead would, would have to come into the reckoning. There's also a possibility here, Gary, of, of a Japanese horse lining up called Grand Prix Boss. Let's check out his most recent run. Grand Prix Boss and Cotillion, it's forever mark in front, Grand Prix Boss getting to it stride with stride, Grand Prix Boss goes to the lead, Cotillion out wide is the one, and along the fence, Asian Osman and late real impact, it's still Grand Prix Boss, Grand Prix Boss, and the second favourite gets up to run second, Cotillion and third, real impact, Minor Luckerma flew home to run fourth. Grand Prix Boss, ridden to victory there by Craig Williams, remember him, he used to ride for McShannon a few years ago. Doing pretty well. Um, it's impossible to evaluate Gary, isn't it? But it's interesting to have him over here anyway, and great for the sport. Yeah, absolutely. Adds some colour to it, and uh, who knows, this may pave the way for uh, you know a stronger Japanese challenge in the future at Royal Ascot. Um, yeah. It will be interesting to see how he how he compares with uh, with the best of our three year old milers. Just one other one to throw in: uh, Tazahum, who's done quite well this season, winning his first two starts of the year. Um, this is when he finished second behind um, uh, Dubawi Gold, of course, last October. He might have improved since then. Yeah, I think he has. Um, this is a, a you know, very promising horse. I think we'll be hearing a lot more of him uh, before the end of the season. Uh, this was only his second run and the ground was on the soft side. Um, you know, as we know, no, 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 no um, disgrace in being beaten by the winner. Uh, he's a typical stout improver. Uh, and has been impressive in both of his races this season. First time up in a handicap, which he won terribly easily. And um, they were very worried about the soft ground at Sandown after a deluge um, mm. there uh, the other night. And yet he still, you know, was good enough to win, albeit you know short head from Fury. But um, that's pretty decent form. Uh, the only thing is, you imagine Michael Stout is not going to pitch him in against Frankel at, at this stage of the season. So I would imagine he's he's an unlikely runner. Yeah. But if he did take his chance, then um, you know he, he's worth upgrading. Uh, you know, in terms of his rating, he's got a fair bit to find. But um, I think he's going to be a you know a, a very decent horse. So in conclusion, then is it a steering job for Tom Queeley? Hard to see. You know, it, it's, it's it is hard to see past him. Um, but you know there there will be some each way value there, no doubt, and uh, that's that's where people will be concentrating, I would imagine. But uh, no, from my point of view, just sit back and uh, and admire this horse again.